Oh, return to play. We're we're getting we're getting closer. We're getting we're, we're we're starting to get a fair bit of news here. So I wanted to make a video just with all encumbering all the news in the last week about return to play. I don't think I'll make daily videos on this subject. I'll just kind of make it every few days, just because a lot of things are moving, but a lot of things are changing as well. So like, I don't want to just make a video with a small piece of content. So yeah, let's uh, let's dive straight into it. So first things first, it looks like the Canadian division may not end up happening. Still might, but yeah, obviously it's looking like there's going to be a 48 hour quarantine period between America and Canada, or at least they can broker a deal with that. So with that, obviously that negates the fact to need the Canadian only division. They still might go down that route just because it's easier from a transport point that, you know, you just go, you play all the Canadian division teams and then you come back. So I can still see them doing it, but it's going to be interesting how that all works. Cause obviously you still want to limit the amount that teams travel and, uh, and we'll get onto that piece of news next. Uh, and also the schedule looks like it's going to be, uh, 48 to, uh, it, it jumps up and down like what it is, but I think it's going to be between 48 and 56 games. Some people are saying 66, 68 games as well. Um, and gen one is really when they're targeting this thing to, to get going. Um, um, I think it'll be more mid-gen. Uh, I actually said Feb or March before, but they're definitely on a path to get this thing going. Obviously, they still need players to sign off on it and board of governors and all those sort of things. But uh, yeah, it's it's looking as if they're, they're really trying to get this going as quick as possible. Then they also want to have two weeks leeway at the end of the season by the looks of it. So that way, uh, if teams need to make up games, if they, you know, there's a COVID thing, they can make it up then. So that's a good way for, for teams to sort of get things uh, sorted and under control on their side of things. So yeah. Uh, the way the travel looks like it's going to work is that you'd go kind of baseball style and you play the game, uh, play the games against the team uh, as much as possible. So you'd almost play all three, say if you versed a team three times, you'd play them all in a row. Um, or at least as much as physically possible to limit travel. That's the whole idea, is to limit, uh, is the whole idea is to limit as much travel as possible. Um, Cause obviously airports, hubs, uh, it, it, it's easy to catch this stuff. Um, coronavirus being the stuff by the way. And, um, and just looking at some numbers today, like it's still a huge rampant problem. 127,000 cases in America just today alone. Um, so yeah, this thing's not going away anytime soon. Like it, yeah, the, the election, whoever, you know, gets in charge. I mean, obviously Biden looks like he's won it, but yeah, Trump's obviously saying, no, nope, that's not correct. Um, but yeah, it's be interesting to see, uh, when Biden gets into office, um, if, if that hampers the, them being able to get on, uh, get fans into arenas. Cause I actually think the lockdowns will start to happen in more States when Biden gets in. Um, no, I'm not being political. A few people like really went at me last one to say I was being political. I'm not doing that, but obviously a lot of news channels are saying that Biden's won, so I'm going to take that on. And yeah, if you want to talk about voter fraud and all that, you can do that somewhere else. Um, Jesus, I can't believe I had to say that. But anyway, um, yeah, so I do wonder if fans in arenas will be an option. Um, I wouldn't go. I, I definitely wouldn't go. Like, like they talk, you know, that you can get fans in Texas. Texas has the most cases out of any other state. It's not a good thing that you can have fans there. So I don't know how this is all going to work out. Um, California, Florida as well, New York. Like, there, there's a hot spots that a lot of teams reside in that, that really have a big problem here. So... Um, yeah, I don't know how this is all going to work when it comes to fans going to arenas and, and, and whatnot, but obviously teams are going to need some sort of money to keep this thing going. Um, so yeah, I think they're going to try as much as they can to get, um, and as safely as possible to get fans in arenas. <coughs> so on top of that means no bubble. Yeah, that, I mean, we can pretty much rule that out. I think there'll be a bubble for playoffs again. Um, I'll be curious to see how that all goes. Um, unless a vaccine's been rolled out in the meantime, but I, I, there's definitely no bubble. It just costs too much. Um, the, the teams didn't get any of that income, um, that they would get, even if they had, you know, 20% full arenas, 10%, 15%, it would make such a huge difference, um, to the bottom line. So it's definitely not going to happen. So yeah, uh, that just about does it. Obviously, um, that's, that's the concrete information that we have is what they're looking at right now. Um, be more meetings this week. I think we'll actually start to get some real ironclad details because they, they, they want a two week training camp, but obviously they're going to have to forego Christmas if they want to start then. That's why, this is why I don't think they'll start Gen 1, uh, personally. I think it'll be Gen 15 because I think, or maybe Gen 10 or something like that because they'll want a two week training camp. 
But I do think they'll want Christmas off, especially with what the schedule is going to be. They're not going to see their family a whole heap. Um, and especially people with um, that are susceptible to the virus within their family, um, they mightn't go home anywhere near as much. Um, just, you know, if you've got someone that's immune suppressed or, or, or has some issue that's vulnerable to this, you probably won't go home anywhere near as much um, for this season. So, um, so yeah, so they'll, so I can, I can imagine that the, the players will probably, at least in my mind, logic dictating that they'll probably push back on the whole, no, like Christmas is, you know, we want to see our families um, and then start a few days after that. That's, that's, that's purely speculation on my part, um, but makes a bit of sense. Um, I wore the Penguins Irish jersey. It has Kunitz on the back. Um, reason is, two reasons. It's hot, and this is the lightest jersey that I have. And, uh, yeah, the aircon that only just got working this morning, so it is boiling in this room. And two, uh, you know, we need we need a bit of luck. We need a bit of luck, and I think the uh, we need a four-leaf clover. But, yeah, I think we need a bit of luck to uh, hope for this season just to uh, make sure it gets off the ground okay. Anyway, guys, that is the whole video. If you did like this video, hit the like button. Otherwise, hit subscribe down below. We hit 300 uh, very recently, so thank you so much for everyone who subscribed. We're on 304 now, so boy, howdy, we're, we're motoring along. Um, got some good videos coming up. Uh, I know I didn't make videos for a couple of days. I was, I was working out a lot in the background um, to obviously streamline these processes and uh, doing a few things that are going to be exciting down the road. And we've got some really good video projects. Plus, all the uh, retro reverse jerseys come out uh, tonight, my time tomorrow. So look out for a few videos in regards to that. We're going to rate them all. We're going to rate every single one of them. And, uh, and yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. See you. And bye.